This is the Audi Q5, and it's got something really strange about it, and it's underneath the bonnet. So let's get it open and have a look. First, obviously, open the door and pull the old bonnet latch. And you'll see that this Audi Q5, in fact, has the engine out of a Volkswagen Golf GTI. That means it's got 252 horsepower and 370 newton meters of torque. And that combined with the fact this has a quattro system means it could be a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing. So we may as well find out, right? What's its 0 to 60? What's its 30 to 70 time? What MPG will it do? You know, will it do its quoted figures? And how fun is this car to drive? Is it really a wolf in sheep's clothing or is it just a regular Audi? Well, my name's Tom and you are watching Paragon Cars. Let's find out. Let's have a little closer look at the engine first then, because whilst this is the engine out of a VW Golf GTI, there are some key differences between this and that car that make this pretty interesting actually. Now the keen-eyed among you will notice that this is not a transverse engine, but in fact a longitudinally mounted engine. And this is because unlike cars like the VW Golf R that have the transversely mounted engine and a Haldex all-wheel drive system, this Audi Q5 actually has a Quattro Ultra system. So what's actually different with this Audi Q5? Well, unlike the VW Golf R, this Audi Q5 uses the Quattro Ultra system. And whilst it has the same ability as the Haldex system to disconnect power from the rear wheels, that is where the similarities end because the Quattro Ultra system in this kind of behaves more like the traditional Quattro system, which used a permanent all-wheel drive system with a Torsen differential that sent 60% of the power to the rear and 40 to the front at all times. The way I would personally describe it is it's kind of like a Haldex system and an old Quattro system that have been like mishmashed together to get the best of both worlds. You get better fuel economy, but you still get that lovely, very slight rear drive bias. But anyway, enough tech talk. Let's go through the numbers and see what this Golf GTI powered Audi Q5 can do on the 30 to 70 sprint. So how did we fare on the old 30 to 70 Sprint? Well, the Audi Q5 did an amazing number of 5.58 seconds. Just goes to show how powerful this powertrain really is. The gearbox, the engine, and the Quattro all-wheel drive system all work in harmony to just get the best possible number with the amount of ponies that are under the bonnet. Now then, coming to the inside is where you'll find one of Audi's best interiors to date, I think. Because not only do you have lots of tech, like this lovely virtual cockpit, these capacitive climate control buttons, and a pull-out wireless charger for your phone, everything in this interior is rock solid. And I mean everything, because every single touch point in this car is like soft touch material, but with the hardest possible backplate you can imagine. It's just so well built. Like in a lot of cars made these days, the center console will move quite a bit. But in this generation of Audi Q5, I can literally put my entire weight on the center console and it won't move an inch, no matter which way I pull at it from. It truly is a thing of beauty. And you know what else is good? The fact that I've still got lots of tech, but also physical controls for everything. You know, I've got a scroll wheel, which just listen to that. That just sounds so high quality, doesn't it? Literally every freaking touch point in this car is just wonderfully damped. Even the freaking glove box is just like, oh, it's so nice. And if you still don't believe me, here's a testament to Audi's quality of the past. This car is seven years old, right? Look at this seat. To me, that seat looks about a year old in terms of wear and tear. I mean, even the driver's seat, for God's sake, this is the most used part of the car. And it's literally just got like one crease on the bolster. But looking at the rest of the interior, it just looks basically brand new. There's literally no wear on anything apart from one crease on the bolster and a slightly dirty steering wheel, which can definitely be cleaned. And I hate to say it, but newer Audis definitely don't have this quality. They're still nice cars, don't get me wrong, 
but the build quality after that emission scandal 100% went downhill. Anyway, enough ranting, let's have a look at the rear. With the seat in my driver's position as a 5'11 guy, you can see I've got plenty of leg room. And if I spin the camera around, you can see I've got loads of headroom. It's an SUV at the end of the day. Of course, I've got loads of headroom. So if you're six foot plus back here, you should be fine, all things considered. Then you've even got your own third zone of climate control, which is pretty nice. And even an armrest, unfortunately, without cup holders because Audi, as stingy as they are now, were stingier back in the day. <laughs> These were an option and uh, obviously the previous owner of this car didn't spec them. Then coming to the boot, we've got a electronically operated tailgate, very nice and fancy. You've got a optional metal grate to get things over, this little flap, which is pretty cool. Then you've got some netage, you've got a little handle to fold the seats down, which I'll get onto in a minute because you have to push these down, which is kind of annoying. Then you've got a shopping hook. You've got this really nice, actually, LED light that is brilliant in winter. And you've got one either side, which is nice. You don't just get one. And you've got another shopping hook. You've got some underfloor storage, which if you have the B&O sound system, will actually include a bigger subwoofer down here. But then you get, you know, your sort of netage and tire replacement stuff, which is nice. But yeah, back to the uh, seats and the folding down situation because you have to reach in and push them after you pull this lever, which to me doesn't really make sense. You know, I'm buying a premium car. I don't want to have to do poverty spec things. But once the seats down, you can see you've got a nice flat load floor, lots of space. And obviously being an Audi, it's a square shape. So getting big square items in is very easy. I suppose the one of the good thing about these seats is that when you are folding them down, even though you have to reach in, they don't get stuck on the way down, which is the case with a lot of other SUVs in this class. <coughs> BMW. <coughs> right, that's the interior tour over. So let's get this GTI powered Audi Q5 onto some British roads and see how it performs, shall we? Starting off around town then, the Audi Q5 over speed bumps is a wonderful thing. It's just soft, yet stiff enough that you know what the car's doing. It's just perfect. Audi is so good at calibrating dampers to just work. Like look, 20 miles an hour over this one, barely feel it. <laughs> it's like there's a suggestion of a speed bump there. And this isn't even the air suspension, this is just the regular dampers that the car comes with. Now you can get adaptive air suspension, would I recommend it? I think if you've got the money, yeah, it's a nice to have. But if you don't have the money and you still want an Audi Q5, you still want that luxurious driving experience, I think it's absolutely fine. The way it is is just nice. Steering is nice and light. Seating position is just about low enough that I can get comfortable, you know, get my, my elbows on the armrests. We do have this adjustable armrest as well, which is a pretty neat feature, plus that wireless charger that slides forwards and backwards. But yeah, it's it's a pretty comfortable car. You've even got the ability to adjust the pitch of the base of the seat. And of course, you've got the usual extendable thigh support for underneath your legs, which you definitely want if you've got slightly weird legs like me. <laughs> but overall, driving this thing around town is absolutely brilliant. And this EA 2 liter engine, I can't praise it enough because it really is that good. I think it probably is one of the best modern two liter engines ever made that and the honda k20 engine but for driving around town it's got diesel levels of torque but then a really nice fizzy top end as well and it just means that you get the best of both worlds you get really nice drivability with a smooth dual clutch gearbox which is almost unheard of you know if you've ever driven a bmw m3 or m4 you'll know the dual clutch gearbox in that is trash <laughs> it works but it's really not that smooth in traffic, whereas the dual clutch in this is just buttery smooth. It's like a fast ZF8 speed, is the way I'd describe it. And then even driving this thing around town, you can tell it's just got really good sound deadening. Not only have you got loads of like actual sound deadening, but you've got laminated windows with two panes and then a bit of plastic in between, or a bit of acoustic material in between, that just makes this car so quiet inside. It's unreal. It's like you're in a cocoon of silence, like a deprivation chamber. But just look how smoothly this thing gets up to speed. The way it goes through the gears, the way the torque comes in, just, oh, it really is glorious. Then in terms of parking, 
Audi being Audi, you don't really get much as standard, even on this S-Line car. All we have are parking sensors, you don't get a reverse camera. And um, even though this is a pretty square shape, I do kind of think you need one. Because whilst we do have pretty big wing mirrors, it's an SUV at the end of the day, so it can be quite hard to judge where you are, especially if you're crap at parking like me. <laughs> but the parking cell, the uh, parking sensors themselves are pretty accurate, and once you are in the space, that square shape does kind of help with just like getting in and out of the car. So most of the time, you can get to the first notch on the door pretty easily. In fact, let's just demonstrate how smooth this car is. So coming out of a junction, just in comfort mode, we'll come to a complete stop. Start stop is off because no one likes that, but you give it half throttle. And the engine doesn't even really have to rev out to get you up to speed because you've just got so much low down grunt. You know, that full 370 newton meters of torque comes in at just 1500 RPM in this engine. And it really does actually feel like it does come in that low. Like you can see we're sitting at about 1600 now, just touch the throttle. And the car just picks up speed immediately. It's almost like it's a bigger engine. It's pretty weird. Now then, we are gonna test the MPG of this thing today. So Audi claim this will do 39 miles per gallon. And this car's got a 17 litre fuel tank. So if you do the maths, that should mean you get about 600 miles to a full tank of fuel. Or obviously, you know, you're not gonna use a full tank, you're gonna use three quarters of a tank. So about 450 miles. Then in terms of cost at one pound 45 a litre, it's about, I think it's just over 100 quid for a full tank and around 76 pounds for three quarters of a tank. So if it does 39 MPG, it is actually not that bad, especially for a petrol powered SUV. Usually petrol powered SUVs drink fuel. Anyway, let's reset our MPG meter now. And we're gonna do a British, an average British daily commute, which is 14 miles. Why 14 miles? Because that is the average daily British commute in a car for somewhere like London. So we're gonna do a little handling test on a roundabout now, and then we're gonna do the rest of the mileage on the motorway to see what the combined figure is, to see if we can get that combined figure of 39 MPG. Right, handling test up first. Let's use our favorites button to get ourselves into dynamic, and we'll turn the traction into sports mode. Now, the favorites button, you can't change drive mode in newer Audis because Audi decided that feature was slightly too nice, so let's remove it. Anyway, once in dynamic, we get shorter, sharper gear changes. We have a nice dynamic steering rack, and handling is pretty good. <laughs> Little bit of body roll, but the engine is the main attraction for me because the performance, the in-gear performance is just astonishing. Like, how is that only 250 horsepower? Definitely more, definitely. And yeah, also in dynamic, you get increased throttle response, um, but Obviously we're on stock dampers, so they don't adjust, which is why you get a little bit of body roll. That's where the air suspension system is really good, because once in dynamic, the car actually lowers and stiffens slightly. So it does feel a little bit sportier. But if you want to get a fair old lick on, I reckon this is going to be a pretty good car, but we're going to put it through its paces properly later on some B roads. For now though, let's get ourselves on the motorway and see if we can hit that 39 MPG figure. And then coming onto the motorway in eco mode is where you realise how do you kind of calibrate eco mode a bit wrong. They totally deaden the throttle and it feels like you don't get boost for ages, but if you do put your foot down, response is pretty good. It changes gears quickly and getting up to 70 is no problem at all. This thing absolutely rips getting onto the motorway. Then once you are on the motorway, that laminated glass and sand deadening really comes into play. You get your cruise control on 70. And yeah, this thing feels so luxurious. The ride is smooth. All the small undulations are just gone. Bigger bumps, even then you feel them a little bit, but you don't get any crashing into the interior. Steering is still nice and light, but wants to stay straight. This car just feels like it wants to sit at 130, 40 miles an hour all day long on the Autobahn. And that's what it's for really, just munching miles, absolutely destroying roads, and doing thousands of kilometers. It's just brilliant at it. Visibility is great. You've got a nice low slung window line, nice big wing mirrors with a curved bit of glass showing you your blind spot. And again, that square shape 
just makes seeing out the car really easy. And it is so quiet in here. In fact, I've actually got a proper decibel reader so we can test the actual level of noise in this car. Let's see how quiet this thing really is. A BMW 840i, for comparison, was, I think it was just above 70 decibels, but I'll put the actual figure on the screen now. Let's see if this car is quieter than one of the most luxurious BMWs we can buy. little daily commute over and we've managed 29 miles per gallon which is a little bit lower than I was hoping for but that's because we had to sit in a little bit of traffic before we got onto the M25. As you can see it's still going up and on a longer motorway journey I reckon you could possibly crack 40 mpg in this thing which would be pretty impressive. But yeah for a daily commute you'll get around 28 to 32 mpg um, if you're doing a bit of motorway and a bit of town driving which is it's pretty decent, I think, especially for a car with this performance on tap and the fact it's an SUV as well. Yeah, it's 1.7 tonnes, so it's pretty hefty. Then, in terms of decibel level, this was the quietest car we've ever driven. It was quieter than a BMW 8 Series inside. And I think part of that is purely because of that acoustic glass. It really does make a difference. Anyway. Let's do some B-road driving now, get ourselves in dynamic, and uh, do you know what actually, let's get the traction all the way off, see how dynamic this thing can really be, eh? and uh, get the gearbox over into manual so I can control the gears myself. This DQ381 dual clutch gearbox is really good, I have to say, the shift time is just, it's like milliseconds, it's amazing. One other thing you notice is that Audi is definitely coded in a little bit of fake V6 noise into this uh, into this engine. It's definitely not as four cylindery as you might expect. <laughs> but yeah, let's see how dynamic this thing can be. I suppose. Foot down. Oh yeah, this thing moves, man. Come off the throttle. Not really any oversteer, but does it understeer a lot? Not really, you know. Upshifts for you. And I mean, look at the performance. For a two litre engine, this is really impressive. I mean, you look at the stats and you think 250, 245 horsepower. You think, you know, it's going to be eh, it's going to be okay. But you put your foot down, even in like fourth gear, it rips. It really rips. That combined with the fact you've got a really snappy dual clutch gearbox makes it feel quite sporty, you know. And then brakes. Audi's brakes are always good, no matter which car you buy from them. The feel of the pedal is really nice. You know, BMW brakes, they kind of feel spongy, like in my 1 Series. They just don't really have a nice feel to them. They work very well, but the feel is just not there. Whereas with Audi, the feel is always there. Um, even though the effectiveness of them is kind of the same. They just feel a little bit more reassuring to me. Steering, it's okay. You don't get a huge amount of feel, but this dynamic steering rack is definitely a lot better than whatever rack was in the previous Audi Q5. Look at that, foot flat through that corner. Not bad, not bad at all. And the thing is, if you want more power, the EA888 2-litre engine in this has a huge amount of potential, or a huge amount of headroom for remapping. Stage one map on this is about 310 to 320 horsepower, and it'll do that reliably. But what about the 0 to 60 time? You know, the 30 to 70 time is pretty impressive, but this car does have launch control. So, is there more performance in this engine than the numbers would suggest? Let's find out. Ooh, 0 to 60 time, right. Audi claim this will do 0 to 60 in 6 seconds flat and 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 6.3 seconds. To get into launch control, put the car into dynamic, gearbox into sports or S, and then just turn the traction off and leave the stability control on, so like traction in sports. Then foot down hard on the brake, hard on the throttle, launch control engaged, and off you go. Simple as that. And wow, this thing is pretty quick at 60. That was fast. Right, let's pull over and see what we did. Okay, what did we manage? That felt pretty quick, but is it going to be faster than the claimed time? It will, 
in fact be exactly what Audi claim literally bang on six seconds I mean in all honesty that's still pretty quick right for a two litre petrol SUV remember this is a big car at the end of the day but that dual clutch gearbox and that quattro ultra system really come into play there there's just no loss of traction no loss of power it just utilizes every single pony that's under the bonnet perfectly and yeah the uh, results speak for themselves six seconds that's pretty quick right let's set this into a small beer road now and see if it can be as dynamic as the drive mode would suggest okay obviously still in dynamic traction off let's give it the beans Man, this thing it rips is like the perfect saying for this car <laughs> it's properly properly fast Okay, can we hit 60 before the corner? Let's go. Up shifts for us. That's 50. That's 60. Hard on the brakes. <laughs> this thing, it's so quick. Suspension deals with the bumps well. Audis are always really well calibrated to UK roads, I find. Like big bumps like that, don't really get any loss in traction. The star of the show though, for me, is just this engine and gearbox combo. Like, the Quattro is pretty good. I feel like it could send even more power to the rear though, preferably. More like an X-Drive system, but yeah, the gearbox and the engine are just a match made in heaven. They are so, they're just so in sync with each other that you just feel like you're putting less effort into driving the car. I mean, like, hot hatches. I'm not going to be going much quicker than this down roads like this. If at all. I mean, even the brakes, like, hard on the brakes into the corner. Doesn't even trigger the ABS. Chuck it in. Quattro just slings you out. I mean, it just... Everything is in this, like, cohesion of performance. It's like that perfectly blended meal where you've got salt, fat, acid, and a tiny bit of spice. But not too much spice. No, it's kind of more of a suggestion of spice. <laughs> but yeah, as a daily driver, brilliant car. And if you want to get a move on on a B road, it's fun. Like, it's a genuinely fun car to drive. And it, it's not going to kill you in the process. You know, if you're not a super dynamic driver and you don't want to be sliding all over the place, you know, not everyone wants that kind of BMW experience. I mean, this car just does it well. It does it perfectly, actually. You know, 90% of the time, gearbox is gonna be in auto, in comfort mode, and you're just gonna be pootling around in this thing. And for that, it's just glorious. It really is. It's still one of my favorite SUVs. You know, cars like the BMW X3, whilst they're definitely more fun to drive, I think, this just has a quality about it, about the way it moves down a road that the BMW doesn't quite have. And I'm not even going to mention the Mercedes GLC because uh, the suspension in that, if you've ever driven one, it's no bueno. <laughs> anyway, I think we'll leave the review there. As always, if you enjoy content like this, please give us a like and why not subscribe? As not only does it help push our content more, it also means we can sell more cars. Uh, there'll be a link down in the description for this Audi Q5. And if you're not interested in an Audi uh, and you want a BMW or a Lexus or whatever you want, there will be a generic link to our website down below as well. Anyway, my name has been Tom and you have been watching Paragon Cars. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.